it is time to go back in the time capsule again and look at eight years ago chibi talking about episode two of ReZero. let's see it what is up my fellow achievements today i'm here to bring all of you an anime review what, what should i call you guys call him he, I, I think he dropped the term chibits a long time ago me personally i know it's all about branding and having a sense of community by having some sort of jargon that alludes to your community members that aligns with the brand of that channel <laughs> monkeys <laughs> all right my monkeys <laughs> on re zero <laughs> I'm glad that this airs on Sunday. Sunday's a pretty damn good day, actually. I mean, look, Boku no Hero Academia, then Re Zero on top of that. I mean, I just love Sunday. And so. It's just so funny every time I'm listening to the eight years ago schedule of, you know, My Hero Academia still getting, not still getting glazed up, but getting get glazed up compared to what it is now. I'm glad to see episode two here. Kind of sad it's not an hour long episode because the episode felt like it was only four to five minutes to me, but yeah. I guess we can't help that. So. Episode 2 of ReZero. I have to say and go on a limb here. Mm -hmm. I like this episode more than the first episode. The <laughs> Liar. Liar. Really? The one hour fucking premiere of ReZero Re intro is worse than episode 2. What is episode 2? Oh, I know. Felt's fan service. Alright, I'm just going to say Lolicon fan service is overriding the episode 1 hype. The reason for that is because with the first episode, it was setting up the presentation yeah. and what to expect from ReZero. With episode two, you yeah. already kind of know what to expect, but this time, you got to see how Subaru, our main mode. Listen, listen, I love ReZero right now, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and say episode two is better than episode one. Episode two, what was it? Him calling Emilia a slur in public was the funniest part. After that, it was him stumbling around. More fucking just fucking around in the slums and then going to the cellar and talking and yapping and then Amelia shows up. There is nothing about episode 2 that compels me like episode 1 did in the same level. Episode 3, I can totally see that. It's 3-1-2, it's easy. And episode 3 is like leagues ahead in terms of the hype and their entertainment. But it was a pop-off episode. Character, how he has to deal with the situation of currently dying over and over and resetting to a certain point and having yeah. to fix things. So I love how this episode was. Sure, right, hundred and true. How our main character has to go out of his way to try to figure out what is going on and fix everything that is going on. And the desperation with the MC throughout this episode was definitely realistic. I mean, when you see that scene when he's communicating with Felt and he's trying to say, "Hey." You need to make this deal with me. You need to, you know, sell this to me. 20 holy coins. You need to give this to me. I have a media here. You it's actually so interesting how this OP power of regression and him knowing the different events is actually backfiring when he confirms things that regular characters are thinking as a contradiction. Like, how would you know all this shit, right? He gets framed multiple times thinking like, oh, you set me up, right? So it's, it's really interesting how because you have extra knowledge that you shouldn't know, is now you're coming off as very suspicious and this is a way of kind of like nerfing the OP, I guess, regression power. You go, please, 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 you know, do not make a deal with this person, Elsa, and please, you know, just do it with me and all that. And when you saw this scene and this, you know, interaction between these two characters, it was very realistic because you could see that he was determined to stop what was about to happen because we already saw two different re uh, ways they can end up like for instance in the first episode we had it at the beginning when our main character died and he had no idea how he died we already saw the bartender he was already dead and you know he was stabbed in a way you saw blood coming down off of him and so we knew he died somehow we didn't know the exact reason but then we had another you know like reverse back in time went back and respawned again yeah. and then you had it to where felt and the, the bartender died once again and when you see this scene and then you go come to this episode, you see Dora, the main male character, he's like, I gotta do anything I can to stop this from happening. I cannot let these two die, because there was some really good character. Is it his pride that's making him think like that? He's like, why would he care about these strangers, Felton Romji? Why would a neat that has seemingly, seemingly no empathy towards, like, couples out in public because he reads a shoujo manga and says, huh, that's cliche, this is the thing that's gonna happen. I just feel like... Again, it probably relates back to his past life that we're not going to see until even season two. 
characterization in this episode, especially for Felt, I didn't expect. And mainly, this is kind of like a different side of the story that we didn't see in last week's episode, which is why I love these type of series, why I love time-traveling anime, because depending on how the writer is, they can really dive into some crazy things and give some really good characterization and development for characters if it is done properly. For instance, let's look at how the first episode was done. Okay. Regardless of, you know, all the deaths and all that and the main goal of the series, like, a lot of the later half of the first episode was focusing on the bartender giving characterization for him and why he cares for felt so much he's pretty much like a father figure for here he cares for a lot and in this episode we get like the reverse of that we get to see felt side and how she views her situation what she wants to accomplish but also how she feels about the person that has been raising her like a father and so i love how this episode took the time to show a different perspective yeah that's kind of the strengths of a time travel like regression story right first run you get romji now you get felt perspective and another thing that's really fucked up though is how people forget and i think that's going to get discovered more and more as we watch because we haven't had enough, you know, failed runs yet. But imagine making so much progress, then that safe state is gone. And that person that you made all that progress with doesn't even remember you, right? We haven't really gotten to those kind of situations just yet, but I can already see how this is going to lead into just like... Such a corrosive effect on the mentality of Subaru as he uses regression powers, right? Because like, it's very OP. For sure, and the fear of death is going to get explored more. It hasn't really been fully explained how traumatized he is, but he is a little bit more hesitant after Elsa fucked him up. But I can already see that with these regression stories and how much progress and effort that you put in going up in smoke and you have to try again and you're probably going to go fucking insane at that point. And then give us this characterization for Felt to make us more connected with her, and then move into the next scene. So, I love how the series ReZero is actually using the time traveling to its advantage and developing these characters one by one. Because we have a new introduction to a character in this episode, which I feel like is going to be very important in the future. Because... As our MC is getting attacked, Subaru, and he Reinhard. gets attacked like every single episode now. Every time he has, you know, a time, uh, you know, reverse, and where he goes back in time and he revives again, you have it to where these people constantly attack him in the alleyway. Well, in this episode, he does something a little different, and he just yells out to the guards like, GUARDS! And, you know, someone comes to save him. Now, this person, I think his name is Reinhardt, Von he Asteria. actually seems to be a very noble guy, and... Judging by his appearance, he's someone of great importance. Yeah. And the thing is, is that the reason how our main female character found the loot house to begin with is probably thanks to this dude telling her the information. She didn't listen to him, and she went out of her way to go to the loot house to find out where her insignia is. So because of this, this dude definitely, at the very least, is going to have some role to play in the story. Now the question is... Yes, definitely. Some role, for sure. Other than him just nuking Elsa next episode... It's the Felt and Reinhardt relationship that looks very interesting. And how Felt even running into Reinhardt as she's running out and escaping the cellar to look for help. That must be like one of the most faithful encounters because of how Reinhardt took Felt after he realized that she could potentially also be a chosen one, just like Amelia, right? So like Reinhardt and Felt, those two, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I'm sad that Romji's alone now though. Reinhardt the Lollicon just kidnapped Romji's granddaughter. And now Ramji's al and, and Reinhardt fucked up Ramji's place. Ain't nobody paying for that shit. Yo, life is hard for Ramji. Is is he really a good guy? Is an appearance? If you know something is said, will he become evil? There's many questions I have about this, but for the most part, though, I'm pegging the guy as a good guy. That's going to be very important in the future to stopping these situations. So at the very least, Subaru has someone on his side that's at the very least high up there in you know status of this world because this guy is a well-known person like a master of the sword a master swordsman and you know apparently he has a lot of pool so yeah now talking about elsa the main antagonist of the series so far that's been introduced yep. she is seen once again in this episode and oh my god that scene when subaru sees her yeah that was an intense scene because i mean just imagine if you every time she's in frame the the mood just shifts and i love the intensity that she brings onto the screen anytime she's there who had the power to go back in time and respawn and then redo everything over again but you've died already multiple times and you saw this killer that killed you this person that fucking killed you if you saw this person what would be your reaction i mean think about this i would be terrified
And Subaru did instinctively cover his stomach out of the fear of getting slashed in the gut because the Battle Hunter loves that shit. So, I mean, seriously, if you were given the ability to manipulate time, go back, but then you see your killer that killed you, what would be your reaction? A veteran that has used the regression power over and over again and has become numb to it would probably act differently. But for a new person using this shit, you're just going to get triggered immediately. It's going to be an instinctive reflex. I mean... Fear, malice, just stuff like that, but I mean... Yeah, and what it's... an anger, right? Fear and anger. And Elsa said, huh, that's not bad, kid. In fact, if you were able to hide your hostility, you could be even better. And I think that we should actually learn that. We, we, Elsa coaching there is probably such a valuable thing. What would you do? And seeing Subaru the way he reacted to her and the way she's like, I can tell that you're scared and I can tell that you're angry with me as well. And, you know, next time you need to figure out how to hide it a whole lot more. And I feel like that's probably some subtle hints of what's probably going to happen in the future. For instance, our MC is going to probably redo this so many times over that he's going to figure out the perfect path to be able to get to the end goal. Yep. But also he's going to figure out how to hide his anger, his rage, his sadness and all that against her for he could probably... Or will his pride get in the way? Because remember, what's the most important trait of Subaru right now? He's a very prideful person, which just goes into terms of the seven deadly sins of the Witch of Envy and stuff like that. My guess of who, you know, uh, if there is a Witch of Wrath, just like Witch of Envy, it is... Ramji. Do some form of sneaky, uh, sneaky assassin type. Appa guy. Apagaya Satella in disguise. Shit, I could see something like that happening. Like, what if he was being sneaky and he assassinated her when she least expected it? So, yeah, ReZero, episode two. Yeah. Pretty damn intense. I love the episode, and I can't wait to see where it's going to go after this week's episode. Because, I mean, now we have it to where our main female character, she's at the loot house. And then we also have it to where Elsa is going to be arriving very soon. So, are they going to be able to stop it? Are they going to die once again? Many questions about that. But I do have to say, I want to point out that the opening song of this series reminds me. Pretty good. Opening one is actually really good. To be so much of Steins Gate. I mean, if you take a moment to look at that opening song of ReZero, it's, yeah, it's very similar to Steins Gate. But anyways, you all have a wonderful day or night. That's it. But yes, I did. I don't know, episode two was alright. It was just okay, right? It was a setup episode that's not supposed to be super impactful. I think Chibi's kind of campy when he's saying he enjoyed episode two more than episode one. But hey, go check his channel and go like the video from eight years ago. And I'll see you on the next one.